Well, hello everyone. I greet you from the enchanted forest at the home of Jim Reynolds. We are also mindful that for thousands of years, First Peoples have walked to this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and their spirituality. We are treaty partners of the Robinson-Huron Treaty of 1850, and we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Algonquin, Cree, and Anishinaabawaki nations. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its peoples. We are not going to light any candles here in this beautiful enchanted forest. In this place, we are surrounded by light, dappled sunlight dancing on leaves and on the ground, the warmth of the day blessing all that lives here, and the presence of the shining one whose light blazes in our lives and blesses us. We welcome the light and give thanks for its presence. We gather to share in God's dream of abundant life for all. We gather to give and receive gifts of deep emotion, deep wisdom, and deep love. With gratitude, we gather as a community to praise God. We gather to seek transformation and to celebrate the power of the Spirit who is always, always on the move. Let's pray. Creator, we give thanks because you are always with us. You are with us in the call of the loon and in the flight of an eagle. You are with us in the changing of the seasons. You are with us when we gather together and when we are alone. You are with us in our giftedness and in our search for new understandings of ourselves, new visions of our communities. We give you thanks, O God, our creator. Amen. I'm going to play now a song from More Voices, number 140. More Voices, 140, As Long As We Follow. In the Gospel according to Matthew, there is a story about Jesus reaching out to a small child, drawing her close, and then calling everyone's attention to her and saying, unless you change and become like little children, you will never experience the kingdom of God. That little story is rich and full of potential meaning. At the very least, it invites us to notice children, to value them and respect them. That story also challenges us to think about how we can be more like a child in our approach to life. More open, maybe. More trusting. More joyful. And this little but important story from Matthew's Gospel can get us thinking about the Kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, well, that's a phrase that is used to talk about living in God's way. 
That kingdom is governed by love. That kingdom is a time and a place of peace and justice and harmony. And Jesus says that somehow we are far more likely to experience that kingdom life when we approach it as a child might. On this particular day, I'd like to invite us to think about how we approach exploration and discovery, like a child maybe. What could it mean for us to look for hidden treasures in unlikely places, like a little child might? I'd like us to think about being surprised by joy when something new or unexpected or different pops up in front of us. And maybe we could imagine our journey forward a little bit like a walk through an enchanted forest. Okay, so today I've invited two of the youngest members of our faith family to give us a guided tour of the enchanted forest. Now, they have been here many, many times, more often than I have, and probably more often than you have. And they have done lots of exploring, right guys? Yeah. So they're going to share with us some of the treasures that they have found when they have visited this magical place. So, Imogen and Ophelia, would you like to start the tour? Yes. Yeah. Where are yeah. we going first? We're going to go right over that, to, to that trail and then we're going to stop to have a little surprise for everybody. You have a surprise and we're going to go this way? Okay. Yeah. All right, let's go. Hi, uh, this is a beaver skull. I found it right over here in the pond. One time I saw a beaver over there and then the next time we came we found its skull and we had to wash it and it was a big process. But this is the final thing. His eyeballs were here, his tusks were here, and his little teeth were right on the sides. Wow, that's an amazing discovery. And it, it, it helps us to think about beavers that are still living here in this beaver pond now. Yeah, I found it just right on top of the den, like it was right on top. Huh, almost like someone left it there for you. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What a great discovery, and you never would have found it if you hadn't been looking here. Nope. There nope. you go, treasures everywhere. <laughs> So you tell me this is where the troll lives? Yup. Yeah. Yeah. Oh and, my and goodness. And you know why the spikes are there? Because he doesn't like visitors to come in his house. But we're allowed to be right here. But oh. only if we give him food. But yeah. we're not going to actually go in there. I wouldn't anyway because I would get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you would get a cage and then you would like stay in there forever. I maybe. do not want to be in the troll's cage. Yeah. And as you see over there, there's booby traps. I Two see of that. them. Yes. And he made a table for people food. He made a table. Well, even though trolls are a little bit grumpy, yeah. it's still very cool to find a troll, troll home, right? Yeah. Now we must leave him food or else he's not gonna he's gonna come for us. Okay. Show me yep, and he's gonna fight us and he's gonna say some crackers. Leave him some food. Oh, this is the offering table? Yes. <laughs> yep. He's very hungry, so we must give him two handfuls. There you go, Mr. Troll. Wherever mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are. All right. Where are we off to next? Um, we're off to the fairy. We're off to the fairy place. We're oh, off to the fairy Oh, that's circle. exciting. I think right. we're going to be all the way up there when... Well, we... you lead the way then. Okay. Because you know where you're going. Go ahead. So, tell me about the fairies, Imogen. Um, there's a fairy hole everywhere. The fairies, um, like to live in, um, trees. And they don't really like to leave to, um, and, and they're real, I, and they're really big holes. So you're talking about these holes? Yeah, it's this really... This one and this one. Oh, I don't want to scare them. I never even noticed those before. <laughs> see what I mean? Sometimes kids see things that adults don't even notice, right? Are there more? Yep. 
one big one right here. Yeah. That's yeah, probably it, for a it bunch kind of, of fairies. Looks like, you know what? What I'm about thinking. further up there? And over here, there's one too. It's like a little play area for the fairies. Oh, a play area. Look, hey. I think this is an apartment because there's like lots of fairies living in here. I think it's so an apartment cool. for them. And then over here, we've been here before. This is where um, this is where the um, oh, we've I left see. the stuff for them. It almost looks like that's a party room that they would use or something. Right here. Yeah. Right and it's really long. We stuck a we stuck a stick in there before, and it's like really long. That is the yeah. neatest thing. Yeah. And we made a bed and a couch and a chair. What, and what do you like about fairies? And then, that and really then I think they're using yeah. the couch and the chair and the bed. That's amazing. Do you want to go sit on that bench for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so that was an amazing tour, girls. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Do you know, like, it's so special to see all this stuff. I can't believe that this morning I was recording the rest of the service right here, right next to that fairy tree. I bet they were listening. <laughs> I never even thought about that. Mm -hmm. and, so, what's up? And guess what? what? Before, one time when you did um, your a sermon in the Enchanted Forest before, there was actually fairies in the front of the camp. Did you see them? Yeah. And I didn't see them. That's the thing. Sometimes children see things that adults don't even notice. Yeah. That's why we need you to teach us and show us. There anyway, was... thanks a lot. Did you want to say anything else to our friends, our church friends? Thank you for coming on the tour. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the tour. Bye. 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 I invite you to sing along as I play the music for More Voices 156 dance with the spirit more voices one five six dance with the spirit I don't think any of us would describe the past months of pandemic experience in our lives as an enchanted forest. But that doesn't mean there haven't been hidden treasures. This past week, I invited a few Hillview and St. Paul's people to do some exploring of their pandemic experiences. What did you discover and learn in this time? I asked them, and here's what they said. Welcome to Marg Vilna from Hillview United Church. I've invited her to share a little bit of what this pandemic discovery journey has been for her. So, Marg, what have you learned and what have you experienced during these past months? Well, since we were unable to travel except to the grocery store and the post office, um, of course, as with a lot of other people, I presume we cleaned out closets and cupboards and whatnot, and I found the albums that I made of the travels when we were younger, we traveled a lot. Yeah. And as we were traveling every day, I kept a little diary and said, we saw this and we did that. And, and it cost us four fifty for a hamburger in wherever. Oh, oh, you kept track of that, did you? <laughs> yes. And uh, so when I got home and I little brochures, we got of things, places we visited and, and so on. And so I was able to go th through all of those 
and uh, I was really quite amazed that Ernest and I have seen almost all of North America <laughs> in, wow. in our travels. I personally have, I don't know if he's been to all of them, but I've been to 45 of the 50 states, all the provinces, and almost all of the territories because the government divided the Northwest into Nunavut after we were there, so. That was I, not fair. That was not fair, yeah. but anyway. And then I saved these brochures and these notes and I made albums afterwards. And I took a lot of photos. And uh, then I could look through these and oh yes, I remember the lovely people we met in the campgrounds and the the Filipino lady we met in the uh, Tim Hortons in um, Whitehorse, for goodness sakes. And uh, Ernest asked her, um, what she thought of the climate. Well, she said, the first winter I called my mother up and said, I'm coming home. And my mother said, no, you're not. <laughs> and she said, I love it now. Oh, that's so nice. What a lovely treasure. You might not have looked at those albums in the same way if we hadn't had this experience, right? That's true. Yeah. I had a second trip over <laughs> North America, really. And we met, uh, we got stopped in the Yukon. Uh, they were doing some road work and of course they have flag people beside. And this was a First Nations lady who was, f and there were mos black flies, mosquitoes <laughs> all around her. And Ernest rolled down the window and he says, how do you stand the flies? Oh, she says, I get used to them every once in a while. I just, phew, my hat and, and away they go and away they go <laughs> and they're they're right back but we met some lovely people there's such value in uh in reliving our memories and our travels i'm as you were talking mark i know this sounds like a minister talking but i was reminded of the psalms and how the israelites would remember their journeying with god and mm -hmm. how uh, what a treasure that was for them to relive Every time they felt a little down or discouraged, they would remember those travels. And I think it's been a treasure like that for you too. That's right. I can still see in my mind, I always wanted to see the Grand Canyon. And I can still remember, uh, we got off the tour bus and <clears throat> I walked over, I mean, it's just, there's rocks and whatnot. I walked over to the edge and I looked down and it was everything I hoped it would be. Oh, that's lovely. I'm so glad. Well, thank you for sharing those insights with us. We appreciate that and it'll help us in our journeying. Another, um, um, and, uh, another uh, lockdown and... You'd be all set. You'd know exactly what to do and how to go into it, right? <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen. No, no. But thank you again, Marg. That's so lovely. You're very welcome. Okay, so You're next on my list of people that I'm interviewing for my discovery tour, is Janet Gore, who's a member at Hillview United Church. So Janet, have you got some insights or thoughts or realizations that came to you as you went through these pandemic months? I have about three. Okay, go ahead. I we guess, can meet your three. I just thought of this one. Um, how difficult it is with my life not being able to get my hair done and cut. I find it very tiring. However, I'm uh, quite happy to uh, for the lockdown and I'll live with it. The other thing is I learned more about what it was like even when I was younger and not so many people worked out and most people had a one vehicle family and they didn't do a lot of traveling anyway. And they didn't get out to see people like we've gotten used to. And so it was a little experience of living the way they lived and quite happy with it. So when you were a kid, do you have memories of life being at a slower pace than that, than it is now? Oh, much slower pace. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I mean, if we got to go to town once a month, that was an outing. Right. And now, you know, if you don't go to town just about every day, it's almost like you're deprived. It's true. I think that was one of my discoveries um, during these past months, 
is that I don't have to rush through life as much as I thought I did. It was really nice to slow the pace a little bit and be more thoughtful about how I did things and at what pace. I'm not sure that I learned any more about that part of life because I had already decided about 10 years ago when I was in Walmart one day, <clears throat> there was a line up behind me and I kept saying, well, you go ahead, you go ahead. And they said, are you sure? I said, yes, because I'm only rushing to my death. So I'm uh, not rushing anymore. That's pretty wise. <laughs> yeah. Is because really, it's kind of like what you don't get done today, you'll get done tomorrow. And if you don't get it done tomorrow, It's true. Have you noticed, did you notice any changes in the way you did your work? Like, I don't mean housework, but working out? Only that I've been working remotely. Right. And, uh, you know, wearing masks in the office. Um, but I had an office of my own at work. So if I was in the office by myself, I didn't have to wear a mask anyway. Right. But I've discovered with the mask, even after I've had my second shot, and I know, you know, part of it's recommended, it'll probably be a long time before I don't wear a mask. It's We've gotten used to it, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I won't wear it as much, probably, but I'll probably still wear I'll probably still wear it if I go to the grocery store. I probably won't wear it as much as with some of my friends, but my bubble, my bubble's been fairly small mm -hmm. and, and, I'm, and, and I'm aware of those people's bubble. And um, I realize that everything I used to push myself to do for events and stuff like that is I didn't have to. It's, it's stuff that, yes, I can go to or not go to. Most of the stuff I do go to is for family anyway, but... Um, right, but that's a good awareness to carry forward with us, I think. I hope that we don't lose that sense of um, awareness around that. You know, that there's an easier pace and that's okay. And like you said, we don't have to rush to our death by just uh, trying to race the clock all the time. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's lots of things that we do that, you know, if we don't do throughout our lifetime, it's really not that big a deal. I know. <laughs> I know. I used to tell my kids that when they were upset about something. So 10 years from now, how much will this matter? That's right. Yeah. You know, and I've never had, uh, I was at the bank, I don't know if you're still recording me or not, but I was at the bank the other day, and because uh, I had to roll things over into a riff, and so we're looking at investments, and she pulls up this screen, and you know, what are you interested in keeping your money for or saving for, and I read down the list. I said none of them. I'm not interested in traveling. I never have been. I'm not interested in buying anything. I'm quite happy with, I don't need new things. Mm. And uh, so I, I really don't have, I don't have anything on my big on my bucket list. That sounds like a relaxed lifestyle, Janet. <laughs> There's lots to be admired in that. <laughs> yeah, like I've never had a big bucket list. Yeah. My biggest bucket list was doing some stuff around home, and I've got half of it done now, so yeah, my bucket for list you. is getting slow. Good for you. Well, I hope you get those other things done, and thank you very much for sharing your insights and your uh, experiences. Well, Appreciate welcome. it. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> so here I am in my travels, exploring what people have been discovering during the pandemic, and I'm talking now with Bonnie Moore from St. Paul's United Church. So, Bonnie, did you have any interesting discoveries or learnings over the past months? I don't know there's a learning, it's more of a reinforcement of things I did before or things that we do anyways, but it really brought about 
I can think of three things actually. And okay. the first one is to be grateful and thankful. I try to do that every day, uh, but uh, during the pandemic, it really brought that home to me more. We should be. I'm so grateful for where I am in my life right now. That I hear you. Yeah. And I was a nurse. I'm a retired nurse, so I mean, I I was working during SARS, and it was nothing like this for the frontline workers. So that's a double gratefulness on my part that yeah. and more respect for them that are work, have worked all these long months. Yeah, knowing about gratitude is one thing. Learning to live it is another, isn't it? It is, yeah. 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 And another thing is, uh, I've thought about too, is everything in life isn't fair. Hmm. And, yeah, sometimes we just have to do things. You know, I've learned that in this pandemic. It doesn't always make sense either. Everything in life doesn't always make sense. It's not always fair. But if it's for the common good of everybody, it's just my perspective, like, just do it. And some things during this pandemic haven't made sense. Why couldn't people golf, for example, or get their hair cut when you could be many people in a big store like Costco? But right. for myself, I've just swallowed that. And just, just let it be. It has to be. That was a learning for me too, Bonnie, um, to not be so angst-ridden over things I had no control over. Just accept it because it takes a lot less energy, right, to go with the flow than to fight something like that. That's right. Yeah. And the last thing is to just be kind. Hmm. <laughs> and that's not also always easy to do sometimes. No, but indeed just if you not. can do nothing else, just be kind. It's always that's the bottom line, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kindness. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I know you're going to carry those things forward. And thank you for sharing your wisdom and insights. Good to hear you. All right, so here I am sitting in the living room at Pat and Ed Hartsky's house. They're members of St. Paul's. And I'm asking Ed if he'll tell us, please, um, what have you discovered? What have your learnings and treasures been through this pandemic? Well, I've been spending a lot of time during COVID in the bush. And of course, it's safe there. And I have a little story that recently happened to me. Good. Share it with us, please. I was... Uh, walking up this steep trail and I come up onto a flat area at the top where it was a bit rocky and clear and I just crested the hill and was in this flat area and I saw a bunch of little partridge on the ground and they all started chirping and running <laughs> for height for, into the brush pile nearby to hide and out come mama partridge there dragging one wing and looking like she was half chewed up <laughs> tricky mama yeah and I said to her mama you don't have to worry about your babies I says, I won't bother them at all. And she uh, she stopped and she looked at me and she gave herself a shake and fluffed up her feathers and started to walk towards the brush pile, clucking, making this soft clucking sound. Mm -hmm. And as she got to that brush pile, she stopped and I swear she looked me dead in the eye. And uh, I just thought that she knew she was safe with me and, and then she just turned and went into the bush after her part, after her babies, and I, and that's the way that partridge took to me has stayed with me forever, and I found God in the bush a lot, and it just brought home to me that the whole world is God's creation, yeah, and uh, and I felt close to that that partridge, and I I sure that partridge had a knew she was safe around me too. And uh, I, it's a, it's a, will always remember with me. It always gives me peace and joy mm -hmm. to have that have happened to me. And that's what God brought to me from, it's a gift from God, from yeah. God's creation, showing that there truly is a what God. What a treasure, because you were in that place at that time. And that's how you could discover and experience that treasure, that gift, right? That's correct, yeah. Yeah. Well, you put me in mind of Ophelia and Imogen, who um, gave us a tour, which we'll be showing earlier in this service, so people will have seen that by the time they watch this interview with you. They gave us a tour of the Enchanted Forest, and they were so open to finding treasure and beauty in places that we might not stop to look as adults, and we would not give them the same meaning as they did. We're all so individual, right? And God meets us in our own ways. Yeah. 
Anything else? No, that, that's good there. For that's now. pretty much it. Okay, well, Ed, thank I'm, I'm you just so much. I'd like to say I miss my church there. Yeah. I'm glad to see when we get yeah. back and we can do some Well, visiting. hopefully we'll have a country and western service this summer. That's what I'm hoping for. And then soon get back into our buildings. That just get those shots coming. Yeah. Right? That's right. All right, Ed, thank you so much for sharing. Well, thank you. Blessings too. on your home. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Our closing hymn is from More Voices. It's number 154, a beloved and familiar song, Deep in Our Hearts. More Voices, 154. Friends, let us leave this time of worship as God's hope-filled people, grateful for Holy Presence and grateful for one another, anticipating the great things that God will yet do in our lives and in this world. Let all God's people sing Amen.